Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we learn about the testing of hypothesis. And in this video, we will learn the procedure, the step-by-step -step procedure in testing of hypothesis. So, the first step and the most important step, read the question at least three times. Uh, when you read the first time, it's kind of like newspaper reading or reading an article from the internet. So when you read the first time, you might miss a lot of points. And when you read the second time, you'll be able to see a lot of things you missed in the first time. And when you read the third time, you'll be able to collect the data and make a rough draft of what is given in the question. So basically, in step number zero, we analyze and make a rough draft out of the question on one corner of your answer sheet. Okay, now step number one. Now from here, it is very important. Formulate the hypothesis. So there are two hypotheses. One is called the null hypothesis. And the second one is called alternative hypothesis. And now the null hypothesis is denoted by H0 and then a statement. And the alternative hypothesis is denoted by H1 and the statement. Now look at this. The null hypothesis will be normally the proposed value. And the alternative hypothesis is something uh, what we are trying to prove, whatever we are trying to prove with the help of sample data. That is exactly what we write here. And remember, uh, what we are trying to do here is using a few sample data, we try to talk about the population. I'll repeat once more. Using sample data, we are judging the population data. I'll repeat once more. Using sample data, we are basically judging the population data. So whatever we write here will be parameters, population parameters. Okay. Now I'll give you an example so that you understand the situation a little bit better. Okay, now let's think about um, a product. Okay, let's think about a biscuit packet manufactured by a company X. And this biscuit packet has marked that um, every packet weighs around 250 gram. That is, in an average, there will be 250 gram. And of course, there will be plus or minus maybe 5 grams. Okay. Now, one person feels that this claim is not true. Now look at this. So someone is suspicious about the biscuit uh, factory or the production. They claim they are giving 250 gram, but someone is being skeptic. Okay, now there are three possibilities. This person may be uh, he wants to prove that they are giving less than 250 gram. Or maybe he is trying to prove that it is not equal to 250 gram. Or maybe he is trying to prove that it is greater than 250 gram. Now wait a minute. As a customer, uh, if they give you more normally, you will be happy. Okay, but wait a minute. Uh, it, that's not always the case. Now let's think about uh, a particular medicine. Uh, let's talk about some paracetamol produced by a company Y. Okay, and that company wants to prove that their paracetamol is like extremely efficient. So what they do is they put a little bit of more medicine. Let's say they overdose it. Let's say it's like 500 mg tablet, 
but maybe they are giving like 600 mg or maybe more that is what someone suspect see now in this case the company is claiming that they are giving a 500 mg tablet but i suspect they are giving more than 500 mg so look at this there are three possibilities it can be less it can be not equal to and it can be greater than and not equal to normally comes like what you call differs the word differs will be in the question and of course less than will be less than and greater than will be greater than so once more i'll tell you first thing and the null hypothesis will be the proposed value for example uh, this generation believes that pi is approximately 3.14 only approximately and suddenly i felt no i don't think pi is 3.14 it is more than 3.14 and that will be my alternative hypothesis so the proposed value is whatever the world believes at the moment or until and unless it is proved wrong and in the case of manufacturing etc whatever the company claims will be our null hypothesis okay just now i am talking about single parameter for example single mean testing single proportion testing etc now there is another option um, i want to prove that uh, factory a is giving more salary than factory b so this will be called two mean testing because i'm i'm comparing two different factories so with the help of samples i am trying to prove factory a is giving more than factory b now look at this whatever we try to prove with the help of sample that is our voice or uh, the the claim to be proved will be our h1 so for the last time i'll tell you h0 means the proposed value and h1 means whatever we try to do with the help of samples okay now step number 2 in step number 2 what we do is we declare the level of confidence and significance we have come across confidence and significance um when we learned confidence intervals and significance is denoted by alpha so what you do is you declare how much confidence you want when you make the decision okay and one more thing if h1 contains less than or greater than it will be called one tailed test and if h1 contains not equal to it is called a two tailed test and in one tailed test we always use alpha and in two tailed test we are going to use alpha by 2 okay now step number 3 in step number 3 the most important step we will calculate the test statistic now look at this um, you will understand this part better when we do problems uh, and we start doing problems from the next video so um, look at this suppose uh, we are talking about that biscuit factory incident now look at this the company has claimed uh, they are providing packets of 250 g in an average and i want to prove that no they are giving less than 250 so i am doing a left tailed test and of course i want my um, what do you call the decisions to be at a confidence level of 95% that means when i claim at the end i will be 95% confident about my decision so that alpha is equal to 5 percentage and please note i am not going for alpha by 2 because it is just one tail test now in step number 3 what we do is we will take the sample data let's say i went to many parts of the city 
and collected the biscuit packets. Maybe I collected 100 biscuit packets and I measured them. So I'll get data like 256, 250, 252, 253, maybe 240, 241, uh, 249, etc, etc, etc. Like that I got 100 data. And from the data, um, the first thing I'm going to check is N, the sample size. So if the sample size is large, then we will write the test statistic according to that uh, size. Now look at this. Uh, you have to note two things. How many parameters are in the test? Anyway, there is only one parameter, the weight of the biscuit packet. So this will be called single mean test. And this is single mean and large sample because I used a sample of size more than 30. We discussed about small, large, etc. previously. Okay. So, with these two things, I will decide the test statistic. And I'll repeat once more. In the next video, I'll tell you the test statistic for single mean large, single mean small, etc. etc. Now, let's imagine uh, instead of a large sample, I took maybe 20 samples. So my N shows that it is a small sample. So instead of this, I'll be using the test statistic for single mean but small. And the formula will be slightly different. Now let's imagine we are not talking about mean. Let's say we are talking about proportion. Uh, let's say we are talking about the proportion of people who are scared of coronavirus. Okay, uh, let's say a recent um, what you call medical report proved that more than 95 percentage people are scared about the virus. And I want to prove that, no, 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 uh, I don't think so. So my alternative will be less than or equal to. So what I do is I had to take some sample proportion, etc, etc, etc. Now look at this. In this problem, we are testing single proportion and the test statistic will be different. Okay, now let's move on to step number four. Okay, now look at this. In step number four, what we do is we will use the statistical tables according to the uh, test statistics in step number three. If you use a normal table, you have to draw a rough normal graph at the end. If you use a t-table, you have to draw a rough t-graph at the end. And if you are using the chi-square table or the f distribution, Fisher's distribution, you draw the corresponding graph. Now look at this. The value we, which you obtain from the table will be the critical value and you mark that critical value on the right if your test is right tailed and on the left if your tail is left tailed okay and on both sides if you are doing a two tailed test and one more very 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 important thing the tail part I think you can see the tail part of the graph. Tail part means the asymptotic part of the graph where the area will be very, very less. The tail part will be the part where we write reject. And the other part will be always accept. Remember, we will write reject only at the tail area. For example, if you are using Fisher's graph, this part will be the acceptance part. And the tail region will be the rejection region. Now step number 5. In step number 5 what we do is we take the value which we calculated in step number 3. And using that value, I'll repeat, using that value what we do is we compare like what you call whether it belongs to the rejection part or the acceptance part whatever. If it is in the rejection part, we will say reject H0. And if it is in the acceptance part, we say accept H0. 
So that's it. There are five steps. So once more, I'll show you the steps. First step is formulate the hypothesis. And there are two hypotheses, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis means the proposed value. And alternative hypothesis means whatever you try to prove with the help of sample data. And never forget, uh, we will always write the population parameters in H0 and H1. Or in other words, H0 can never be X bar equal to 36. This is something wrong. This will never occur. We will be always talking about mu. We will be always talking about uh, what you call the population proportion, etc, etc. So, step number two. In step number two, you declare how confident you want to be in the prediction at the end. And if it is a two-tailed test, don't forget our alpha by two. And the third step, um, you decide whether your test is a single mean test or a two mean test or is it more than two mean test or a single proportion or two proportion or more than two proportion etc etc and also look at the sample size with these things we will decide the test statistic and in your syllabus you have to learn seven different tests that I'll explain in the next video. Okay, and now comes step number four. In step number four, what we do is we make a graph and we find the values from the statistical tables and we'll mark those values on the right side if it is right tailed, on the left side if it is left tailed, and on both sides if it is two-tailed. And always remember ANOVA and CHI-squared. You have to read this as CHI, but the spelling is CHI. Okay? ANOVA and CHI-squared are uh, always one-tailed. It doesn't have two tails. It is completely on the positive side of the graph. And in step 5, we make a decision. And the decision will be either to accept H0 or to reject H0. So I'm going to wind the video right now. I'll be back very soon with uh, the first testing method. So till then, bye.